In Genesis 14, we see that Abraham was very high. Can you believe that one who was so high could have been so low as to plan to sacrifice his wife for his living? Can you believe that the one who would sell his wife in Egypt could be so high as to be above all the kings? When Abraham was ready to sell his wife, he was in the lowest hell. But when he dealt with the kings, he was in the highest heaven. We all may be like Abraham in both respects. We may be mean, planning to sell our wives, or by the Lord's grace, we will be higher than the kings. Abraham's victory and his being higher than the kings were absolutely due to the intercession behind the scene. Behind the earthly scene, something was going on in heaven that determined the entire situation. We all need to see this. Life study of Genesis message 44, Knowing Grace for the Fulfillment of God's Purpose, The Seed and the Land. In this message, we come to a great turn in Abraham's experience of God. Everything that we have seen of Abraham's experience of God thus far has been outward. Abraham was called by God, and he answered God's calling by going to the place where God intended him to be. That was absolutely outward. Following that, Abraham's second experience was living by faith and trusting in God for his living. The first trial that he faced in living by faith was a grievous famine through which he learned to trust God in the matter of eating. Whether in ancient or in modern times, whether in the Orient or in the West, all people, regardless of their attainment, education, or position, are concerned about the matter of making a living. Making a living is completely dependent on eating, on bread and butter. In the Bible and in human history, many times God exercises control over the human race through this method of eating. Do not be proud. For once God removes your food supply, you will bow down and say, Oh God, help me. We have seen in previous messages that after Abraham came to the place where God wanted him to be, the first lesson he had to learn was to trust God in the matter of eating. He failed this test and went down to Egypt. There in Egypt, he learned the lesson of trusting in God. After learning that lesson, he returned to the place where battle and I. Immediately after that, there followed another lesson in the same realm, in the realm of eating, when there was strife between the herdsman of Lord and the herdsman of Abraham. These herdsmen were fighting for their bread and butter, striving with one another for the sake of a better living. They did not want others to take away their bread and butter. Abraham was victorious in the second trial, having learned in this first trial that God was sovereign in his daily life. Abraham came to know that the God who had called him was the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. He did not need to take care of his own bread and butter, for he had learned that the one who had called him would take care of this for him. The fighting between the four kings and the four the five kings was also related to bread and butter. According to history, all of the warfare about the human race is over this matter. All international warfare is for one purpose, bread and butter. Genesis fourteen eleven indicates that the fighting between the four kings and the five kings was for this purpose. Abraham was not afraid of those four kings, but went out boldly and fought against them, slaughtering them and recovering the food supply. After Abraham had gained the victory over the four kings, Melchizedek came to meet him with bread and wine. This bread was mysterious. There was no need for Abraham to do anything in order to get it, and he did not have to fight for it. 
Abraham just fought the battle and recovered the food supply, and then Melchizedek came to him with bread.